life is simple. It's, it's, it's not meant to be hard. It is simple. Really. It, it's, 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 um, it's, it's simple. Life, life is not complicated the way you put it. And the way the day I learned about it, you can't believe it. It has added more joy in my life. And I, 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 I began to realize that um, I really don't have to have an answer for everything. And I got to have some answers. And I don't have to win every battle. I should lose some of them. What I should maintain is the war. Um, I, I read a book, it was very interesting, the other day, sometimes last year. I usually have a book and a theme for the year. I read a book by um, Stephen Covey. He's one of the motivators. He wrote one of his books, The Seven Habits Effective People Should Remember. I like the way, not should learn, but should just remember. And, 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 and he, he spoke about seven, but I remember I can mention three just in, in, in passing. Number one, he said, just be proactive in life. Be proactive in life. Don't, don't dead. Don't, don't say, speak a few words and they go higher my charge. Yes. Just explode and, 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 and you know bring the best out of yourself and don't don't tell us you are looking for a perfect thing out of you we know you are imperfect you are growing you are uh, you are being molded by the spirit of time Sigmund Freud um, I saw my read also his writings and as professor put it the father of the modern psychology he said in his book introduction to psychology that man is a product of two things one is a product of um, genetics, which provides capacity, how much you can take. And then heredity, which is environmental input. You know, what the environment put into you and accustomed to you, that shapes persona. Very interesting. I'm, when I was born, uh, I, I was born as the fourth child of my parents. Uh, we were 12. Um, the rest of them have gone to be with the Lord. Um, at the age of four, five, I suffered polio, which retarded my development. Now, few things developed some reason for anger in my life. Number one was the divination and the source of my, uh, of, of my being and my situation, which raised the issue of blaming it on others. This is what has been dealt with by uh, Madam uh, Diana in, this bo in her book. Now, you know in Africa, nothing happens for nothing. So mm -hmm. they say, there must be something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine when I was growing up, I would see hear women coming home and say, <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's very interesting. <laughs> You know, that's the son of the Baruse. He's one of the handsome children. You know, I don't know whether I was handsome, I didn't know. But I could hear from my mom that, uh, that she, could, she could sing a song when she's drunk. She said, Where is my, the one who grows on the ground, yet she is my, he is my eye. When, when he carries me on, the, on her back, when she carries me on her back, I'm taller than her, and I could see far. My mother had uh, one eye blurred uh, because she was eaten by a um, peck of a tree. I mean, one, sometimes, many years when they used to pursue a coney with me, and then that small one came and really uh, blurred it. So she had uh, one eye looking very clear, but me, I had both looking at, so though I don't have legs, I could see it clearly. So he said, <laughs> <laughs> that's my eye. Can you listen to that thing? Anyway, I grew up and um, I, the question was, why did one of the children of Mze Pusyane uh, uh, got sick and could not walk? And there are three explanations that were given. This became the source of my anger in life. But number one, that the ancestors, because we never knew 
a complete description about God, structured way. They say the ancestors saw a criminal in him, <laughs> cut his leg to do it. Can you imagine that weird interpretation? <laughs> How could somebody think about me and plan for my life and interfere with me and plan to cut my legs? Why wouldn't they allow me to live and be able to, you know, make my own choice? The second explanation was that there was a curse committed by ancestors. This is what you talked about, what we call inherited curses. And it said through generational curses and sins committed, governance that were broken, governance that were pronounced upon themselves as families, they said one of the manifestations could be this one. And I could easily condemn and blame my family. As a young child, and as I grew as a young man, I would begin to say, why was I born here? I almost asked my mother, why did you have to be married to this family and bring this curse upon me that I cannot work with other children? This kind of question, I struggled with it for 20 years because I didn't go to school. The English I speak today, I learned it at the age of 21, thanks to teachers like Mr. Pele Pundoti, thanks to teachers who took me through in high school, like, um, um, uh, we call him, he comes from Western, um, and then thanks to teachers who lectured in university, like Dr. Anon by and others who really gave me, and asked me to speak like the first man, uh, first speaker of English language. And, and, and so I had to feel it that Due to choices of my parents and grandparents, I am the product. And the final one was from my own mother. She told me, you know, Kip Kimboy, you know, that's, that's now my maiden name, given by mother alone, and she's the only one allowed to call me by that. You know, she was so mad, she could even not describe a woman in the ordinary language, but in a very negative way. <laughs> like, like, and they say, she kept on passing our home and looked at you and said, Karara, only but she forgot to say, Karara, Nea, you know, you have to close it. <laughs> <laughs> You don't say in my language, it is so good, marvelous, great. You don't say those things. You just say, it is good, but badly. badly. <laughs> badly. <laughs> they say, they say that way. if you say it that way, demons don't understand. You confuse demons. And they say, this woman could not learn the language, and if it, she exposed my son by saying, Kararan, <laughs> Kararan, and I was so blamby, look nice, and some those things. And he said, because of that careless woman, look at what has happened to my so, so the transfer of that anger came to me, and I grew up a bitter man. And um, I remember at the age of 20, uh, I was really asking myself, because the brain was good, and uh, I could really argue intel intelligently. Now, you can see 20 years I've not gone to school, and therefore I can't live my life normally like anybody else. And I, you can see I was very ambitious. I, 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 I am very proactive, very ambitious. I, I have not changed really. What has, happened, what has changed is the, what they call the software. Otherwise, the, the hardware still remains. Actually. It's still the same now. <laughs> And I was a gravitas of relationship. Children would mold around me, in fact, uh, and so on, in those days. But now, I began to, to do three things. Number one, um, reject myself, uh, that I am a man living um, a life that I'm not supposed to live. And, 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 and um, I was angry about that, that developed anger in me. Number two, that some people made a choice for me when I was supposed to participate in making decisions. And, and that number three, it looks like I have, I have nothing 
to do to change it. And that brought about my despair. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I began to think negatively about myself, about life, and I, and I began to think that maybe the solution is to deny myself living. And uh, I, I decided then maybe the best option that I can um, take is to take my life. I, wa I was to commit suicide. And I chose a tree next to our home those days in New York with, with a lower branch. And I, then I discovered it. I saw this is where I'm going to hang myself. Um, so as I was planning, because of anger, I was so angry. I was blaming myself. I was blaming everybody. I was, I was seeing. Look at me. I can't walk. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. So to know I would any, yani, what will I be? And when I imagine going to sit by the gross road, put down the mat and begin to beg. I come from a community called the Lembus community. Very proud people. <laughs> even, even when they live in a tight house, they feel like they are in a gorofa. They don't care whether you are. And, and I said, yeah, you, you know them, eh? You have seen them. <laughs> they are so proud, I'll tell you. And I, and I come from the, the, main, the mainstream of, of, of that community. The, 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 they would call in, in other societies the upper class of the same. And, 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 and I said, I will not go and spread a mat and begin to bear in my life. Especially when some people denied me the chance. And those people, it happened like they are my ancestors. <laughs> I have their blood with me. I have the genealogy in me. I can't blame anybody else. I said, my own family denied me. You know, there is so much bitterness that we can have with people we are related with. It is greater than an enemy who is outside. Did you realize that? If it is your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, your parents, who denies you an opportunity, you become bitter many times than you could be to someone else outside. And you could hear people say, you know, you know how I'm just trying to put the four wheel of the community in the way they talk when things are getting hungry. You know, I, I remember when a lady called Elizabeth, she's got to be with the Lord when I went to solve their marital problem. The, the husband is my cousin. And she was saying, in other words, when I was crossing the river Lomanira, I came with a clear chase. I came to your house and I became a man. Uh, lady in your boma. I'm going out very early in the morning and I bore children to you. I took care of them. Today my own lungs are wheeze, wheezing. <laughs> and you come and talk like that before me? And she begin to cry. And I, and I tell you it was really messy. And then, uh, <laughs> you can see the amount of encouraging yourself to anger. And, then, then you can, and you can really increase it and increase it. And um, then um, this came a minister from Nandi uh, called uh, John Tanui way back in 1969, 1971, and I had the message of the gospel of Christ. Um, and, 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 and three things happened in my life that were very strange. When I had decided maybe committing suicide is the right way, I was still intelligent enough to think this way. There could be some another way. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not that I was fearing death, but I was asking myself, suppose there is another way. <laughs> then I said, <clears throat> Keep game, boy. I'm giving you one full week and may truth speak to you. 
And you know, my family, we were not Christians, we were not Muslims. We were tra pure traditional people. We believe in ancestral intervention in human life. We believe in, and because we were, had an affinity with the Maasai's, we were close to the uh, Orgoid, the seers of the Maasai's. Um, all of them could mean nothing to me because I had had the declaration of the elders. So a young girl, apparently she's the daughter of one of my cousins, had gone to school in Doro, those days, Arambe Secondary School. She came home in December and invited me for a good gospel crusade. No, it was in April. She said, somebody's coming. Now the good thing is that she was a, this man was a Nandi. And we, the Lembus, have respect for the Nandis. We are very close. Mm -hmm. So is it a Nandi? Yes. The one who gave us the initiation of right of person? Yeah. Is is coming? Yeah. What is he saying? He's talking about the scripture. <coughs> I said, what is the scripture? They say it is gathered information about God in a book. Ah, I said, the book, which is red by the ages and black on the top, they say, yes. Oh, okay. What does that red mean? It means, it means blood that breaks curses in human life. Ah, I said, it can change somebody's life. They say, yes. I said, okay, why don't you taste that? If you are willing to go to the why don't you go to the Kiriokwe is a kind of a tree in my, in my local that I, I had identified, Kiriokwe. So I said, if Kibiriyoko was an alternative, why not taste this one? <laughs> so I went to the meeting. And three things happened. This man spoke in a language that was audible, clear, and convincing. Number two, as he spoke, a conviction came into me and really began to melt the inner stand that I have developed in my life. And number three, I began to discover that although I have lost something, I have not lost it all. I still have something to begin from. And I said, I lost the legs, but I have a hell of a brain. I have a good heart, good health. You know, apart from the crooked legs, everything about me is 100%. So I said, I said, in any case, life is not about speed. It's about many factors. It's not about physical strength. There are people who are strong, and not all of them are strong. In fact, some are weaker than me. So this man read a scripture. And the number one scripture that he read was in the book of Romans, chapter 3 and 23. He said, all have seen, and they have fallen short of the glory of God. Then all of them. I, I said, not me alone. Who is a victim of that particular curse and all the issues heaped on me? Even these other characters have also seen. An example came some somebody Nandi committed suicide. He had land, he had wives, I don't have even one. He had children, I don't have even one. He had tractors, and I don't have even, even a bicycle. Uh, even the one children plays the toy, I didn't have it. And this gentleman committed suicide. An example was given. Sometimes in 1969, after independence, you know, the joke was looking for you. You didn't have to look for a joke. So a gentleman dropped himself from ninth floor in Nairobi. And I understand he had a master's degree that time and i said i have no i'm not even going to nursery school and then now has come down killing himself and i asked myself what will my death have as an impact to anyone if these great people are dying for condemning themselves if i die today what does it add and what is it written 
uh, reducing. Mm -hmm. And I discovered a man to which I've got a bit. Now the second message that came from the Bible was from the same book, Romans 6 and 23. And, and it said, um, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life is in Jesus Christ. I, I see. So there is, there is an, a way that I can solve this uh, misnomer. And it was coming. Then the final scripture, because I don't have to speak much, is from the book of John 3.16. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe should not perish but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. I discovered there is a possibility to change. Yeah. This, this is why I believe in the Christian faith that even if heaven, God changes his agenda about hell and heaven, I would still choose Christianity as a club because it made sense. One, it explained the universe, the origin of it, and the intelligence behind it in the arrangement of what you call cosmos. Christianity as a religion is so spiritually structured that it gives me meaning of self-expression and self-realization and self-acceptance. Interesting. And finally, Christianity has given me a reason to accept a social order in terms of character influence. And it comes from the scripture. I, I think, I, I said these things, and I said, Lord, if you are out there, then make me know that the decision I'm making tonight, this afternoon, it was the middle of the day, is true. <coughs> And I said, I don't know you. You are not my classmate. You don't come from our community. I don't know anything about you. But this man is talking about you becoming real. I don't know what, what is all this meaning. Can you, can you do something? What do you usually do so that you can make it? Because in my community, if you are to, to finish a class, there is a part something to be performed. You go to the river, water is splashed, animal is slaughtered, blood is sprinkled. I said, how about you? <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> I, I, how can I join your movement and feel it? Interesting, I can't explain. Something happened. I felt my burden thrown away and everything about me um, changed completely. Then I grew up. But that was not the end of anger. Even, and then I was, I joined, then I became a, um, the Lord called me to the ministry. And I joined the ministry of the church in 1974. And then I was ordained into ministry by Manasseh's career, the late, I was an Anglican, in 1977, June. Even, after ordination into Christian ministry, I had not dealt with the issue of anger. And I remember afternoon, after church service in 1977, we sat in a small restaurant in Muzerej, it used to be called Koibe. That small, it was a small center. It is me who bought tea, I mean lunch, for the church elders that day. When we were seated, there came a man who in 1969 mocked me. He, he had found me and I was a gravitas of children and, and he came and stood behind me. You young man, you keep on messing up with our children around, calling them around you. What do you think we, you will be? 
your location will remain the very environment of the house until you die. And you will be the chief. Location cook. The time he came, I had progressed in my life. And he sat in front of me. Pap! Say, Pastor, buy me tea. <laughs> Charles, that was the worst moment in my life, Diana. I felt something like fire. I felt some heat in my tummy. And I said, God, is this what you wanted to bring me to? How can you bring me such a man? Don't you have other people who should come? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Direct, I, I can't explain. And he said, I have brought him this afternoon because I have a business that I have not done with you. You will never be yourself as long as you are holding others responsible of your failures. Mm -hmm. You can never progress until and not unless you release others and remain yourself mm -hmm. to determine your destiny. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I felt that thing falling down and I said, man, don't take tea. Take lunch. I'll pay for it. From that day, prof, to this day, I hold nobody responsible of any challenge. I take every challenge that I face as an opportunity for me to prove what I can be in the next level. Ah. I discovered the angrier you become, the more disastrous you become to yourself. And in conclusion, I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you can be saved from anything in this world, but no one will save you from yourself. Man, you can close the door behind and you are inside there and you destroy yourself. So the greatest protector and the greatest security for your life is yourself. So back to my mother. She told me, you came by? Majamenji moenu and I said, Msao wa tumbo yangu, hakuna akudamini kuliko unavyu chitamini mwenye. Kaya kase? Then I said, eh, masema nini? Masema, masema ya pili. Mamichi negure nengi, yeme tinye keine nengu. No one recognizes you and give you a recognition if you have nothing to contribute. So she told me, don't ask what people can do for you, but all the time be determined to do something for others. This way you will solve the issue of anger. So I've lived a life, um, public life, and participated. And one of the things I thank God for is the capacity to manage, I didn't eradicate it, but to manage anger. How do you manage it? By treating it as a phenomena and um, a force of attitude. It is actually hunger on our attitudes in life. If, and that, if you can solve it. So, life is easy. Life is simple, mm. right? Mm. So what do you do? Do the, try to do the right thing all the time. Mm. Second, and do it to the best of your capacity. The rest, leave it to God if you are a Christian. 
the others, you leave it to the spirit of time. Let history sort it out. What you will not be able to sort it out, let history sort it out. In my culture, let me tell you, there is a saying. You try nine times to better your life. They say, you try. And every one trial takes 10 years. <laughs> Can you imagine trying nine times? <laughs> and he said, if, if you are not successful with us, try it in bed. It will come. And you miss it, you check it, it's going to be talking about Which means your children will achieve what you did not achieve. They say, you try nine times, that will mean almost 100 years. But remember, if you don't do it, if you don't succeed it, you will get it through your bed. Then you go. You know, when I was swearing in Parliament the other day, lifting the Bible up, my, te my tears rolled down my cheek when I remembered my mother, who took care of me in the moment of my vulnerability. And I say, Tabaruze, I wish you were here to see the little thing you protected becoming something. I remember my father told me three things matters in life, son. Freedom, dignity, and family. Yes. He was a World War II military officer. I remember all of them when I was lifting the Bible. And lifting the Bible. My sister and brother, as we launch this book, I have given an intentional talk tonight mm. because I said we are not covered in vain, yes. but to speak to the core of your heart. Hold yes. nobody responsible for anything mm. in your life. Just understand them, that they are trying their best and they are not able to do it. Do your best and don't be your own enemy. Forgive them all. And, and, and I have learned to forgive people and, um, and forgive them. And I, I don't have a reason to, to hold any grudge. Uh, if it doesn't work, I just leave it. You know? I just look at you and uh, after some few minutes, I see I have no value I had to you and you have no value I had to me. I just leave you. <laughs> and I don't have to tell you why I'm leaving. <laughs> Because I'm safeguarding my heart. The Holy Book says, safeguard your heart more than anything else because the fountains of life comes yes. from there. So thank you, Diana, for taking us back to our senses to deal with those things uh, that emanate from uh, our mistakes. Don't be, don't be unkind to yourself. We, we have some mistakes we do. And, and, and I realize that um, I'm not perfect. I'll try my best. Actually, I'm, I'm a per perfectionist. You know, I, 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 I believe in doing things right. Really, I'm very serious and committed. But the day I realized that I am not as perfect as I would, then I allowed the mistakes of others to be learning lessons. Mm. So, um, I'm perfect. I, I really believe in that. And then, I... We are motivated by seeing the end, having the end from the beginning. You must ask yourself before you do anything, what is the end game? <laughs> so somebody came to my office the other day and he was Talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And I said, Have you ever had, a, have you ever thought then about the end game of what you are about to enter into? 
What, what do you mean? I said, do you know it's easy to meet you tomorrow collecting garbage around here and talking about Jesus coming tonight? <laughs> when, it, when nobody has asked you for it. You say, what do you mean? I said, what do you mean? <laughs> you are becoming brutal on me. I said, sometimes we need to. And I said, can you stop this and love yourself? That's what the Bible says. Love yourself as you... Yeah, you can't love me if you don't love yourself. So one of the things I've learned to do, Professor, like you said, you are really proud of yourself, your answer. I like that, you know. <laughs> love your neighbor <laughs> as you love yourself. I thank God I have people who love me. I, I, I have a wonderful family. I, I have a wife that loves me, understands me. I love, I have children, very wonderful children. They, normal children like others, but still, they, they, you know, they believe in me. One day I asked them, I, I was taking them to university and they said, <clears throat> We were taking our first one to university, then the follower is a talkative, is the one who is daddy's girl. So I asked them, how does it feel to be children of a physically challenged father? And then Amy said, listen dad, let me tell you what you think. <laughs> we have always thought everybody else is abnormal, you are the only one normal. <laughs> I tell you, I, I have a wonderful family. But let me tell you, and I have also wonderful friends. I have very <coughs> genuine friends. I, I have friends that love me genuinely. I, I, I really have them. They really look at me like their parent. They look at me like their brother. They look at me like their mentor. They, it is beyond pastor. They are my friends. Mm. But let me tell you, do you know I'm not hungering my life on that? I thank God for children who love me, but I know these are wives of other husbands. These are husbands of other wives. The only one I have in my family which belongs to me is the very wife. The one, the one I saw, and the only one I saw when she was here. When she, has, she had all the elements. <laughs> Let me tell you, my friend. I'm going to be a kid. 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 i She's talking more than I do. She's so much uh, very aggressive than I do. And I'm getting silent, uh, Polly Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to tell her, you know, these days I'm becoming fearful. I'm scared. So please don't, don't, don't shout too much. I will run away. Or I might go and leave on top of the house. <laughs> Would you allow me to declare the book officially launched and uh, the ceremony should follow? And is, is it, do you have anything else? Or?